What's up guys, my name is Brandon and the past few weeks have been absolutely crazy busy for Apple. We've had a lot of new hardware and new software being released over the past couple of weeks. So in this video, I wanted to discuss the current state of iOS 15. So we're gonna cover all of the bugs, we're gonna talk performance, battery life, connectivity, and much more. So before we get into that, let's go ahead and recap the past couple of weeks since I have not done a weekly follow-up here on the channel like I usually do every single Saturday. So anyways, two weeks ago on the 20th is when we got the first release of iOS 15, the initial release, and then the very next day we got 15.1 beta one for beta testers. And then eight days later on the 28th, so this past Tuesday, we got iOS 15.1 beta two for beta testers. And then just yesterday on a rare Friday release on October 1st here, we got iOS 15.0.1, that was a public release. So lots of software releases. And of course, when we pair that with new hardware and the iPhone 13 series, iPad, iPad mini, you know, there are bound to be several issues related to the software. So there definitely are a lot of issues and that's the whole reason for making this follow-up video here. So I normally include additional new features in these follow-up videos, but there haven't been any additional features found since I already showed you guys over 310 new features and changes in my massive hour long video on iOS 15, which by the way, if you have not seen that somehow, that is linked up in the cards and down in the description below. So instead of covering new features and changes, we're gonna be discussing the bugs, the performance, the battery life, the connectivity, security updates, and also discuss what is coming next for Apple. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So first off, one of the biggest issues that a lot of users had once they got their iPhone 13s, I'm using the iPhone 13 Pro Max here and I had this issue as well. <laughs> you saw back tap working right there, but the unlock with Apple Watch feature was extremely bugged out for the iPhone 13. It was unusable. You got an issue with you know communicating with your Apple Watch, but that was fixed in 15.1, the betas, and then also in 15.0.1, which was just released on Friday. And along with the unlock with Apple Watch fix, we also got a fix for the storage bug, where for some users, it would show storage almost full in their settings, even though their storage wasn't almost full. So that was also addressed in 15.0.1, but it is not fixed yet in the 15.1 betas. We also got a fix for the Instagram sound bug in iOS 15.1 beta 2. That was also partly due to an Instagram update. We got a fix for the AirPods Max randomly disconnecting. So I had that issue a lot on iOS 15, but that has been addressed and fixed in 15.0.1. Apple did not mention it in the release notes, but I tested it myself and I've not had any disconnects since using iOS 15.0.1. So it's still broken in 15.1 beta 2, but I'm sure in the next beta, it will be resolved there as well. At least for me, it's fixed in 15.0.1. And then also we saw the notification swiping bug fixed here as well. So this is something I showed you guys in my 15.1 beta video. You can see there I can swipe over on these notifications now if I want to, whereas before I was just simply not able to swipe over on them. So those are some of the bugs that have already been resolved with software updates, but there are still a lot of remaining bugs in iOS 15. And by far the most popular one is the touch responsiveness bug or the touch input bug, whatever you wanna call it. So this is an issue where users are just simply not having their touch input register on their device. And for me, I'm mainly having this issue inside of the YouTube application. So like, for example, you could see here, I search for something and I simply cannot tap on the first video that shows up. And it's always just the top video. So this happens in the homepage, the subscriptions feed, when you search for something, it just seems like it's an issue with the top video right there. Because the second one, you can see, well, I guess I can't play that one now either. So it's just really weird. It's very, you know, hit or miss, it seems like. Now I have noticed a trick is if you refresh and then tap on the video real quick before it finishes refreshing, that will, you know, get you into that video. But it's still a very annoying touch responsive bug. And I've only had this issue inside of YouTube, but some people are having this issue inside of Safari, on the lock screen and other applications. So at first, you know, for a while, I thought it was just an issue with YouTube, but after several updates, it seems like it's not just a YouTube issue. It seems like it is an iOS 15 issue. So that is by far the most complained about and the most mentioned bug, you know, for good reason. So hopefully we see a fix for that very soon. And then we also have a bug inside of CarPlay. So I don't have CarPlay, but a lot of users that use CarPlay report issues when trying to play music, when they have navigation going. So like if you have your navigation going and you try to play music, 
apparently it will crash your Apple Music or Spotify application, or sometimes it will just simply hang and you'll have a lot of issues with CarPlay. Although there does seem to be a little workaround right now. As you can see here, Mike commented on my video saying, if anyone has that CarPlay crashing issue, try to go to settings and then music and change EQ work for me. So maybe you just need to change your EQ, maybe switch it to off, and then you won't have those issues. Not too sure because again, I don't have CarPlay, but that could be something you know to help you out if you're having that issue with CarPlay. And then another issue that some people are having is an issue with Siri switching between the normal voice and the old voice. So like for example, if you have your normal voice in here set up to one of these voices down here, if we go to Siri voice, if you have it set up to one of these that is not the default voice, sometimes it will revert back to the default voice. And this happened to me during the announce notifications one time when I had my AirPods in, the Siri voice was the normal voice, the old voice, and not my voice four here. Actually, I just listened to them and voice four is the default. So it's voice two that I normally have, just not on this device here. So I would have voice two on my main device and it would you know, respond to things or tell me the notifications of my AirPods using voice four, even though I had voice two selected. So that's an issue that's still remaining here in iOS 15. And then we also have an issue inside of settings. So this just happened right before recording this video. So you can see here, settings is completely frozen up. Right now on my screen, I'm trying to swipe down and nothing works. So it only goes back to normal and you know becomes unfrozen after I open another application and then go back into it. So you'll see that right here. So I opened up music, then I go back into settings and you'll see you know it has a little refresh there and now it works. So there are still issues with you know apps hanging and freezing, specifically with settings for me. That was on my main device, which I just updated to 15.0.1 today. And that was on this iPhone 13 Pro. So it's definitely not an issue with storage or the chipset inside. So that's a really annoying bug that hopefully gets fixed soon as well. And then we also still have the really weird animation, the really weird stutter when you go to take a macro shot on the iPhone 13 Pro series. So you can see there, there's that little animation, that little stutter right there. So that's very annoying. It does kind of indicate that you are entering macro mode, but still, it's pretty annoying and hopefully that does get fixed. I think Apple did say that will be fixed in a software update. We also have major issues with handoff to HomePod. So when I hand off to my HomePod mini, even here on 15.0.1, I just did this today, it will freeze the music app sometimes. The music app will just have like this big blur over it and you can't do anything. You have to completely close out of music and go back in. Now the music plays sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't. But the big issue is that Safari or music rather just completely freezes up, which is really annoying. And I've been having issues with the handoff to HomePod for a while now, but it's still not been resolved here as of today. There's also an issue with Spotify draining battery life here in iOS 15. So this appears to be an issue with Spotify itself, but I have gotten a lot of comments about that and it seems like an update is coming very soon to fix the battery drain on Spotify. And then we also have a very specific bug here in iOS 15.0.1 and that has to do with Hey Siri not working properly with voiceover enabled from the lock screen. So you can see here, Richard, commented on my video saying this. He said there's a pesky Siri bug that's still haunting blind users. So I'm not going to read the whole thing because see there that basically when he, you know, says, Hey Siri, when he has voiceover enabled, nothing happens when he asks certain things to Siri from the lock screen. So hopefully that does get fixed soon as well. And if you did not hear your issue covered, I will cover more issues in the community poll section of this video. But anyways, moving on to the connectivity. Connectivity on iOS 15 on all versions has actually been great. And that's surprising to me because I had a lot of issues on iOS 14, but no real complaints of Wi-Fi or cell connectivity, which is a really good sign. I mean, it's not just me, pretty much nobody I've seen in my comments has had issues with Wi-Fi or cell connectivity. And the most surprising thing to me is that my 5G is actually doing really well. So a lot of times in iOS 14, my 5G would drop when it would go from LTE to 5G, and there'd be like a 30 second interval where I just had no signal and nothing happened. But I've not had that once on iOS 15, even before the iPhone 13 came out. So it seems like those issues have been resolved and the same with Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi is not dropping anymore like it did in the past. Now, as far as performance goes on all versions of iOS 15, 
it's very solid on every device I've used it on, including the iPhone SE, which is now on iOS 15.0.1. So the first iPhone SE, not the new one. So I did install 15.0.1 on that today and it's running great. I really have no issues with it besides the normal bugs that I'm having on all devices. Now, you know, one thing to keep in mind is that there's always going to be bugs in software, especially when it's only been out for a couple of weeks. So, you know, you have to expect the bugs to get patched up in due time. And that of course will improve performance across the board when those bugs do get fixed, but it's not uncommon to have a ton of bugs, you know, so soon after a major iOS release. That's just one thing that a lot of people fail to realize is that no software ever is going to be perfect. It doesn't matter how much you beta test it, how many updates you push out, nothing is ever going to be perfect. And you know, that's why we have to just look forward to these updates. And as long as Apple keeps fixing them, then I don't really see why we can complain too much. As far as the battery life goes, battery life is actually excellent on every version and every device. So this is, I believe like the first time maybe ever that I've seen where I don't have a ton of complaints in my comment section on such an early iOS release. It seems like ever since like iOS 10, you know, the first couple of releases after it, my comment sections were just full of people complaining about battery drain. But in iOS 15, I really don't have too many people complaining about the battery life, which is a really, really good sign. So hopefully Apple doesn't touch it and make it worse, but it seems like battery life for most people, I mean, 90 plus percent of people is excellent. All right, so now let's go ahead and move on to the community poll. So I post this every single time a new software update comes out to see and kind of gauge how you guys are you know, handling the software, how your device is handling the software. So if you go to my channel, and then go over here to the community tab, you will see I have this poll right here. So I asked you what iOS version are you currently on and how is it running for you so far? So almost 40,000 votes. So thank you to everybody who did vote and also you know, almost 500 comments as well. So thank you to everybody who commented. I did go ahead and read all of them. So you can see right here, iOS 15 and iOS 15.1. If we see right here, the percentages, you can see most people of course are gonna be on iOS 15 and not on the 15.1 betas. So you can see the majority of people, 52% said that iOS 15 is great with no major issues. 35% said iOS 15 is decent with a few bugs and then five and 3% on 15.1 and saying it's either great or decent. And then 6% of people saying that it's horrible, lots of bugs and bad battery life. I would assume that is for iOS 15. So most people are having a good experience so far with just a few having some minor bugs. So let's go ahead and read some of these comments to see what you guys had to say here. Lisa has the top comment with, I'll just make it 150 likes right here. So she said, I would have to say my biggest bug is the non-responsive screen, which I did talk about. Most of the time it happens on YouTube when trying to click on a video, sometimes in Safari, when I'm trying to switch tabs, the screen like freezes and I have to swipe up and close the app and then reopen to continue with what I'm doing. So that seems to be an issue that obviously a lot of people are also having here on iOS 15 and iOS 15.0.1 and 15.1 because it's across the board on every version so far. So hopefully this does get fixed because again, this is easily the biggest issue right now in iOS 15. And you can see here, Kyle has the same issue. Battery life is fine, but sometimes the screen goes unresponsive when trying to swipe to unlock after Face ID. So that's an issue and I've not had that, although I do have issues when it comes to like when you have a sleep timer set, when you have the bedtime set up, the sleep mode or whatever. Sometimes when I try to open up my device after that, it just freezes and I can't get in and I have to relock and unlock my phone. And then Eric here says that the battery life was bad after just installing, but now it's pretty much the same as it was. And he does have a bug when it comes to the guided access feature here as well, where it sometimes does not engage when triple clicking the power button. It seems like Charles is having issues with me music randomly pausing, screen froze, and wouldn't let me do anything for about a minute. That's really strange. 15.1 beta 2 on the 13 Pro Max. That is not good. I've not had any issue with the screen freezing and not letting you do anything. That's pretty strange, but that is an issue being faced right there as well. Battery life is unreal, but ironically, I can't click on YouTube videos and have them play. So yeah, we did talk about that already. Ed is happy here that the unlock with Apple Watch feature has been fixed. And he also says battery life is phenomenal. So I'm really seeing a lot of the same thing. A lot of people having touch responsive issues or just issues with the screen freezing. But aside from that, they're having good battery life and performance. 
So that's pretty interesting. Marius here is having an issue with the white keyboard showing up even when having dark mode activated. So that was a bug I had in iOS 14, but it looks like that might still be sticking around here in iOS 15. He's also had issues with apps crashing, like stop working and then closing. So that's interesting. I've not had too many apps crash, but they just may not be you know, updated for iOS 15 yet. That's the only thing I can think about there. Johnny here says that he has phantom notifications and sometimes notifications cannot be interacted with. And then also an issue with zoom display mode on YouTube. Corey here is saying that he's been getting messages with no notifications. So that seems to be happening a lot. That's happened for a couple of years now. So sometimes you just get a message without ever hearing your phone or seeing it light up at all. So that is also still going on here in ios 15 let's go ahead and read off one more because again it's a lot of the same comments here about these screen responsive issues and storage bugs so it looks like we also have a widgets bug so he said that all widgets go blank and unresponsive after going into the widget section so i guess he means when you go ahead and add a widget here and then go out so yeah i've not had that issue and i cannot reproduce if that's what you're talking about but it looks like some people do still have issues with widgets but anyways thanks to everybody again for commenting on this community poll i did go ahead and read all of these off camera but i appreciate everybody who gave your input here so now let's move on to what is next for apple so next week is going to be the week of october 4th cannot believe this year is flying by so fast but this week this upcoming week we can expect to see ios 15.1 beta 3. So we should see the third beta of 15.1, which will likely include some of the fixes that were found in iOS 15.0.1, which if you didn't see that video from Friday, that will be linked up in the cards and down in the description below. So we should see that. Now there's a slim possibility of seeing a 15.0.2. I think it is possible within the next two weeks but I think it is very unlikely. I think Apple would only push out a 15.0.2 if there was a major security vulnerability discovered. So I don't really see it happening, but it is in the realm of possibility within the next couple of weeks. And then of course I would expect iOS 15.1, the final release to come sometime near the end of October. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the latest on iOS 15, all three of the current versions out right now. So 15, 15.0.1 and 15.1 beta too. So let me know what you guys think about this down in the comments below. Of course, let me know if you have any other issues that I did not cover in this video. I want to make sure everything is heard and known. And of course, like always, if you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe because I do these follow-up videos every single Saturday. I took a couple weeks off, but now I am back to doing these every single Saturday. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.